you, you, you mentioned this book that's in the back yeah. of your head. Um, it's probably already written up there, so you just got to put yeah, it down on paper. Yeah, I got to get it on paper. But um, maybe go through some of the things that you have learned um, that are the don'ts or the you know the don'ts of church planning. I, I, I see a lot of guys really talking about this, and I think it's healthy uh, online. I don't know how much in our circles it is in, in the URC. I think we need to talk about it more. I yeah. think we need to give more priority to it. But I do see a lot in, in uh, other guys, other other denominations talking about this. I see some really successful plants out there. I see some that always, you know, they struggle. Um, what have you learned? Yeah, so the book we're joking about is is the top working titles <laughs> How Not to Plant a Church or How Not to Plant a Reformed Church. It'll sell it'll sell better than how to, I think. Yeah. I mean how not to's are as important as how to's, right? right? And, and my how not to is every mistake I've made, yeah. you know. And so I think we mentioned oversight, like it's it just a, a single, I'll, I'll run through the list yeah. if any of them interest you. Yeah. If a single guy's passionate, like, yeah, that's fine. You need that passion, yoke it to to a healthy overseeing church. Mm-hmm. Uh, manpower, how much do we give one man, two men, maybe a man and an elder? That's That was my yeah. point about the Valley Center mm-hmm. type thing. Um, you could send a younger guy with mm-hmm. an elder alongside. Yeah. Um, man, uh, resources in terms of property. Uh, mm-hmm. We rented these beautiful historic buildings uh, the the churches themselves were were dying, and I thought, well, this is great. We're getting you know we we're getting this be- Teddy Roosevelt's church in Washington <laughs> D.C. for eight hundred bucks a month. It's incredible. And I thought it's so cheap. It's the classic yeah. Dutch thing, right? Like it's yeah. so cheap. Well, we paid for that. Yeah. Because we rented a church that was falling apart, and people would come in, and we wouldn't have AC in the summer, oh, we wouldn't have heat in the winter. Right. And you visit a church like that once, and you're like, oh, that really. Like you might not even register. You might think like, I didn't really so this enjoy is, myself. This is a good question. Um, you know, a lot of church plants start in like gyms, schools. You you, you didn't do that. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. I mean, you you went into the buildings right from the beginning. What's your What are your thoughts on that? Like, wh- where do you think? I, I mean, I have a I have a conviction. We built a nice building here in Escondido. It looks like a church. I think things need to look like a church. Yeah. You know, what are your thoughts on that? About especially plants that are doing it in schools. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just yeah. saying, preference wise. Yeah, I've I've written on this in Christian Renewal. I think. Not specific prescriptions, mm-hmm. but I think we generally under-resource property. Mm-hmm. We think of it as an afterthought. And this is a virtue. This is one of those virtues of necessity. You know, I think in the OPC, in the URC, a lot of us left established churches. And so you're poor, you're you're starting a new church mm-hmm. life, and you meet in a gym or a school. Mm-hmm. And, and we say, you know what? Church buildings are bad. Church buildings uh, can become idols. Uh, church buildings can drag you down, yeah, and there's maintenance. Right. All those things are true. There's a whole right. series of trade-offs, right? Right. But church, you know, people have built church buildings for quite a long time <laughs> yeah. for lots of good reasons. Exactly. And, and praise yeah. God, I worshipped here last night. This yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. And you're going to, you're going to, I thought last night, you know, we're going to be holding synod in that room. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, we often go out and, and rent a college or something to do yeah. synod, like, all the investment of this church is going to be a blessing to every single yeah. church in our federation right. this summer. Right. What a wonderful thing. Like yeah. I have, you know, so, but I think, so, so on the principle of under resource, we'll, we'll pick a, a property because it's available or affordable in a bad location. We'll pick one with bad uh, amenities. Um, we, we moved into an Adventist church uh, two and a half years ago now. And this sounds kind of silly, but uh, I was actually had a sabbatical when our, our church moved. And when we got back from the break, my wife and I, were, it was our first time worshiping in this church. She's like, have you seen the bathrooms yet? <laughs> we take yeah. it for granted, right? Yeah. But yeah. we worshiped in churches where our toilets were clogged. Or they were literally 80-year-old, 100-year-old bathrooms. Sure. And sometimes the cheapest isn't the best value. I know. That's exactly right. We don't buy yeah. cheap clothes that fall apart no. in a week or two. I mean, sometimes yeah. we're forced to, right? But, yeah. but sometimes right. it is. Right. And and whether it's the geographic location, right? Real estate, location, location, location. And our established churches make the same mistake. You know, a, a farmer gives a plot of land and we build a steel structure outside of town. That's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. But a church in the heart of town might encounter I know. more engagement. Right. It's interesting with Escondido. When this church was initially built, the old building, this was all farmland around us. Now the city's come to us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's kind of nice. Yeah. You know, we kind of got that. Works. That's the long game. That's called playing the long game, right? <laughs> yeah. But so I think we should invest more. And I think. That's where our classical committees can come alongside a young church planter, a young church planter, or an overseen church, right. and say, you know, we have this new classical mm-hmm. committee structure that's just getting off the ground, mm-hmm. and say, hey, we've learned this lesson over time. I right. know this looks like a good deal. Right. Um, let's take a second pass at your options. Mm-hmm. What about this place? What about this place? Right. And uh, so the the bottom line is, 
it should be a higher priority. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. So first thing, what's, what's, what's second? Um, so yeah, if property, the, if your oversight, manpower, yeah. um, location, that sort of touch it, leadership, the training yeah. of officers, yeah. um, uh, time, you yeah. know, I, I think sometimes maybe it'll be a 10 year project. Mm-hmm. Maybe if it's a daughter church, it's a two year project. Um, I know, you know, we have some, um, uh, sort of quasi daughter church works in, mm-hmm. in play now in the URC. And, and they were talking about organizing within 12 months, right? right. That's great. Like, there's right. no single recipe, mm-hmm. but I think sometimes we send someone out and we put them on a clock and yeah. we say, if you don't turn this around here. Now, I think you also, one of the hardest conversations, I think the last last chapter, and you already raised this, is, is how and when do you close the work down? Right, right. And that's a whole topic of itself. And yeah, I mean, I have thought we, we haven't quite accepted at times that it should be shut yeah. down. And then we keep pumping money into it. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just prolongs the inevitable. So what? Yeah, what is that? When is that time where we say, okay, this is uh, evidently the door, the door is not open here. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so I think, like so many of these things, there isn't a single recipe. I know. You know, you don't write down this number, this uh, mm-hmm. you know budget issue or 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 whatnot. I think it's this idea of being well surrounded mm-hmm. by people who have a lot of experience. And having that topic on the menu, yeah. if the letter of call has a provision for the planter, should the work close, mm-hmm. it, it's not a doomsday scenario to consider right. closing the work. Right. It's just a healthy, you know, I, I've, uh, I was with my daughter on a, a weekend getaway and she was with some schoolmates and I was helping to chaperone with another dad and I was in an inner tube floating down a river and I looked up. And uh, there had been a storm that had come through and there were branches hanging off the trees and mm-hmm. big gashes. And, and it was, you know, the edge of a river. Yeah. Trees are like over years mm-hmm. falling into the river, that image. And I thought about, you know, all these organic mm-hmm. metaphors for the church and Paul yeah. talking to Romans about the yeah. church being grafted in. Right. And, you know, churches have scars. Yeah. And churches have a lifespan. Mm-hmm. And and just thought that, you know, we if, if we understand that when a, a church sends out a lot of shoots and some die every season. This is really good. Right? Yeah. Every mm-hmm. season. This is how plants grow. Yeah. And those yeah. scars, the the broken off branches, the limbs that maybe had a shot, the, s- the saplings, the seedlings, mm-hmm. those aren't failures. I want to tell you a story. I, I when I was in college, I went up to Humboldt State. You know, I I didn't I had no inclination toward ministry. I was playing, I was playing ball up there. I got involved in a plant, an OPC plant. Mm-hmm. The church. The church had been a non-denom Bible church. The pastor's going through Romans, gets to nine, doesn't yeah. know what this thing is they're, they're experiencing. Didn't even know historic reform faith. Oh, wow. The whole church becomes an OPC. Awesome. Pastor yeah. and all. And uh, that thing, at that time, when I was there, it was just the church, you know, for me at least. This isn't just about me, but it was the church I needed. Yeah, yeah. I think I was converted out of that ministry. We're doing Bible tables at the college. There's another ath- athletes. Athletes were coming. Praise God. Um, the, yeah. church was, the church was booming. And then it was maybe, you know, I left, came back here, uh, maybe three or four years later, church folded. Mm. But it served such a glorious purpose for all those saints at that moment in time. Yeah. I mean, I, I all those saints, we were, it was really sad that it folded. I didn't understand that. Yeah. Yeah. But I looked back on it and I thought, do you know the blessing it was to so many there for us? We were we were learning the scriptures. I was converted under that. Yeah. And here I'm in a minister now. Yeah. Right. So that that plant served a huge purpose in the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. You know? No, absolutely. We had a 15 year anniversary uh, a year and a half ago, and one of the things I did, which I haven't done enough of, frankly, because DC is such a transitional place. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had well over a hundred members. We're a pretty small church. You know, our membership's around 50 now. Yeah. But we've had well over hundred members over our history. Yeah. And I sent a note out to the folks I could contact and I said, share just a memory yeah. for our congregation today to yeah. hear about how God has provided for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just yeah. wept, you know, mm-hmm. you know how it is. I do. And we don't, I do. We don't stand often yeah. enough and say, our God has brought us safe thus far. Mm-hmm. Right. Amen. A stone of remembrance. Yeah. And set up those, those milestones. And, mm-hmm. um, but there's a temptation there to you start about the difficulty of closing a work down mm-hmm. there. Yeah, but there are these two families and they really love the Lord. I know. You know, sometimes you got to make really hard decisions. And that's where the guy on the field isn't best positioned to make those calls. Mm-hmm. And if we had a, a truly church-centered vision of church planting, mm-hmm. where the supports, the overseeing church, 
the whole classes are brought in. So you right. get the wisdom. Right. And um, and it's not about, you know, green eye shades and dollars and cents mm-hmm. and return on profit. That's yeah. not what it is. Right. Uh, you know, some of our urban church plants, because of the expense of cities mm-hmm. or coastal church plants, right, they might lose money, quote unquote, for a long time. Mm-hmm. And we invest in overseas missions. Right. Endlessly, endlessly, because we should. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, sometimes those things can be warning signs, like yellow flashing lights on the dashboard. You know, like, well, we're, we're not seeing the progress, we're not seeing the growth, mm-hmm. and uh, we got to make a hard decision, right? Uh, because right. again, I think one big takeaway of of my whole vision would be like, what if we planted half as many churches, but we're twice as successful? Mm-hmm. And by successful, I'm not talking about the world's means, but, yeah. but what if we yeah. gave more resources to fewer plants mm-hmm. and left fewer men in a lurch, left fewer men <laughs> I think isolated. Bill Green calls this a shotgun approach. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot the shotgun, you know, yeah. hit it hard on 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 a targeted yeah. thing and instead of, you know, shooting everywhere. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We need to be snipers, right? <laughs> like let's, let's dial it in and take more time. What does a sniper do? Take a deep breath. Yeah. Okay, we're going to pull the trigger, right? And then when you you know you're committed, right? And, right. And so it, it is like so many things. It's it's commitment and vision, mm-hmm. but uh, I think we can take and and, I, and we are taking steps. You know, we've we've taken steps. We're even now uh, doing some revisions on our church planting manual. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a little bit out of date. We yeah. with the guys that thankfully put it together for us. They drew on existing things out there, and mm-hmm. I think it needs to be. Uh, I serve on our synodical committee as well as our classical home missions committee. And I think it, it uh, so that committee is working on that. We're going to be uh, meeting next month face to face and mm-hmm. uh, maybe bringing some revisions uh, yeah. to Synod, Lord willing. Hopefully, I'm not getting too far out ahead of my skis yeah. here. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I think we can grow. I think we can grow in, in the financing of works. I think, you know, mm-hmm. we've had this bugaboo in the URC. I'll just call yeah. out an issue for us of, well, we don't want to go the route of central planning, we don't mm-hmm. want to go to the route of central authority. And committees, because it does violate the spirit of our church order mm-hmm. in many ways. But I think um, I think we've had a little bit of a maybe a confusion. I don't think centralized money means to be centralized authority. Mm-hmm. If you set up the proper rules and say any classically approved work has standing to draw on this fund mm-hmm. according to a set formula, right? Like there's nothing I think by uh, our, our decentralized uh, ecclesiology is actually a virtue. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why we have it. <laughs> we believe it's biblical, and I think it's a virtue. But if you're going to be de- decentralized, and if you have a common project, you need to communicate better. Right. You need to right. cooperate better. Right. So we can keep that authority in mm-hmm. the consistory, in the classes, but then build. I mean, look at the Southern Baptist Convention. They're mm-hmm. Congregationalists. Mm-hmm. They do more missions work. <laughs> I know. I mean, think of the dollars that flow through that thing. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not endorsing any of that, frankly. Right. Right. But what I'm saying is, with a decentralized uh, ecclesiology, we can still cooperate. Yeah, we can still work together and actually keep, you know, as long as we all trust that. Hey, every classes has eyes on. We we adopted a new provision. You open a field, you close a field, you get classic classes concurrence on that, mm-hmm. and that's that's a very valuable. It is a stopgap, and, and you know, yeah. people look back and said our our last synod in in Buffalo. Uh, we didn't make as much progress maybe as some folks wanted to do in the field of missions. I think we made great progress. Sure. I think that synod was a success. And we didn't move too fast for anyone. We need right. to all move forward together. Right. And I think that the the steps we took towards working more coordinated fashion in classes mm-hmm. are really productive steps. And as I talk to these guys in these different classical committees, uh I'll, there's a there's an appetite for setting up funds. Mm-hmm. There's an appetite for internships and That's these good. kinds of things. Yeah, I think. You know, and maybe this is an encouragement you can give to the more established churches. Um, I just think we get in a rut and we don't, it's just like anything, you know, we have to, it's like, you know, we had John Payne here preaching on, I said, I want kind of a missions emphasis. I I want, I want to get us thinking about that again, because we're not thinking enough about it at times, right? You just, you just, you, you should be thinking about it all the time. Yeah. But the busyness of life, church life, problems, all we, we get sort of, you know, yeah. narrowly focused just on us. Right. So what, what, what can I do? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, well, let, let me, uh, I think you're asking me a question there. I'm going to take a little bit of a sidestep on, on a cooperative <laughs> thing like, that we can learn from our brothers in the OPC. And I think yeah. this will be coming to send Lord willing uh, yeah. again, out ahead of my skis, but I know we've been talking about it in our mm-hmm. classes. The OPC has a loan fund. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's very difficult for a small church or church plant to get a loan from a bank, almost impossible yeah. to build property. Right. I'm sure you know this, yeah. right? And the OPC has a fund that is when churches have savings or church members have savings, you can plant them there and get an interest rate. But they use those funds to make capital improvement loans or purchase loans to churches. Mm-hmm. In over 25 years, my understanding is they've never had a default. They've never had a missed payment. And, and what they're doing is they're saying, like, look, if, if you're a church and you have you know, a little bit of savings in the bank, why not put it in a bank where that money can be loaned out right. to a sister church? And so URC members and URC churches can invest in this work and what that has done over its history. And so we've taken that as a model, and the OPC has offered to help us. Mm-hmm. And so, Lord willing, that'll be coming to this year's Synod. Wonderful. And uh, a That's study great. a study committee, so we do it in an appropriate mm-hmm. way yeah. for a URC loan fund. Mm-hmm. But developing something like that, that's it's in the background. No mm-hmm. one ever thinks about it. Mm-hmm. I never heard of this idea till a, a, another church planter, Zach Wise, brought mm-hmm. it to me a few years ago because he knew yeah. brothers in the OPC. Mm-hmm. And there, we have friends standing by. So yeah, that, that's and, and you know, I, I would say all of us can get behind that at Synod. Sure. And it's not like a, a one size fits all solution. It's a study committee to yeah. see if it fits us to do this ecclesiastically through the right channels Absolutely. is the way to go. Absolutely. Absolutely, and put that in place and encourage our churches to to support. But that. I think you know, I think big churches. Um, I love the idea of internships, and uh-huh. I think if you can bring a guy on, and again, maybe you get some outside funding to support it. Maybe you have the resources to support it. You don't know what you know. To go back to the sniper metaphor, all this gunfire. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's the Joe Rogan show. You know, we're talking about guns and just, bow and arrow. And, we're just not cussing. <laughs> we're drinking. Right. I gotta say, I thought there would be a drink involved, although it is early. Uh, the the you don't have to have the target picked out yeah. to buy your rifle. Mm-hmm. And you can buy, you can make the purchase, the investment in an intern. And maybe and and use that to free up, use that extra manpower to A, pour into that guy. And you might say, well, interns are more work. Well, in some ways they are. Mm-hmm. But to pour into that guy, and, and maybe he fills the pulpit 10 times or 20 times that year. Yeah. And the pastor uses those 10 or 20 weeks to invest in doing some demographic research or to, to setting up a committee within your council to explore options. And maybe at the end of the year, nothing happens. Right. But take the time picking out the target. Mm-hmm. Right. Think of snipers. They, they build these nests, yeah. right? Right. And this is all new to me. I've never came up with this sniper thing before, but I like it. You started us on this path. You know, a sniper builds a nest, and they mm-hmm. think it's a place of opportunity, but they don't know. Right. They're guessing based right. on patterns of behavior, right. and they're investing a lot of time mm-hmm. and energy, and they might sit there for days, That's and um, and then they see something, and then they're ready. And I think we can build a lot of the structure that makes us more ready to move when the opportunity, when the spirit provides those that's opportunities. Good. That's really helpful. And that's where I'm excited about the mm-hmm. URC because we are still in our infancy yeah. as a denomination. I use the bad D word, right? Yeah. As a, as a church, we are a church with our own culture, our own ways, our own right. history, our own confessions. Mm-hmm. And we're in our infancy and we're still building this mm-hmm. system. And I think we can build a, his, a healthy system. Any system can be abused, yeah. but we can build a system with, stop gaps and checks and balances that will reduce the risk of abuse mm-hmm. and protect against it. Right. And this is a lot of the, the, the recipe is there in our church order. Right. Right. Um, Very helpful. So Very helpful. But we have, a, as you know, mm-hmm. I, I think oftentimes the guys who have been passionate about church planting have uh, come across as critics or mm-hmm. crybabies mm-hmm. and uh, you're not giving enough money. You're not right. doing enough right. nags. And, right. and look, we don't want to be moralists in the pulpit. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be moralists in our strategy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, we need a better vision, but we, we need, we can build things together. We can be constructive and say, there's, there's opportunity for growth here. That's really exciting. And we, we all want to grow. We all want to be doing better at our callings. Uh, you know, I'm sure you 20 years in, you want your sermons to get better. Yeah. Uh, to be. Do you ever look at yours 10 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Would you preach those again? <laughs> I'm preaching through Ephesians for the second time. Are you? <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, uh, and, and it was because our consistory said like, hey, we'd really like to hear Ephesians. And in D.C., it's an entirely new church. You yeah. know, this was a decade ago. Yeah. And it's such a core book. And. I often think, oh, well, this will be great. I'll look back at my old sermon. Oh, yeah, you're right. New, you're right. New series. <laughs> <It's> also, <laughs> so. Well, I appreciate all your insights, Brian. Um, you know, we need. I, it reminds me constantly of our need too to pray 
for you guys. You know, Paul was constantly talking about pray that the Lord would open a door, yeah. right? You think of Philadelphia. I've opened a door for you. We've got to pray that the Lord opens these doors. And right? I, I want to say uh, a word of thanksgiving to uh, Rich Bout, who's yeah. our missions coordinator. Yeah, and great. I think one of the little tiny things he built, you know, little laying bricks in a wall, right, was uh, a prayer list that goes out every month mm-hmm. to our churches. And I was here visiting Escondido and Santee churches in this county, and I prepared the bulletin for the worship service at my church in D.C., and I saw in the bulletin that we're all praying for the same guy. Yeah. And and as a planter, when I see my name on that list, yeah. that is yeah. such a comfort. You don't yeah. even know. Yeah. And uh, Well, we appreciate your work, brother. Thanks thanks for thank coming you. on today. I look forward to this book. Yeah. Um, give me a deadline. I, I, I'll I'm give work, you a I'm deadline, because when we get deadlines, we actually do it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on. Um, you know, it's raining today in Escondido. You get to go back to sunny D.C. soon? So. Uh, snowy D.C. <laughs> actually, we haven't had snow in years. And last week, we got like six or eight inches. Okay. And so it was a good week for us. It's cold. It's a cold snap right now. But yeah. I, I grew up in Southern California. Yeah. I love the sunshine. I even the June gloom. Aren't you in Tahoe? A, I thought you were in Tahoe. Uh, my folks retired to Tahoe oh, okay. when I was in college. So okay. for the last 30 years, that's kind of been my home base. Okay. But um, I got to say, I prefer the seasons. Yeah. I prefer the change yeah. of seasons. And it's a it's a reminder that time is passing and, yeah. and that we're not just all living in this Gnostic <laughs> bubble. <laughs> California. <laughs> yeah, California. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on today, Brian. Thank Good you. to have you. I appreciate it. Thank you.